I'm Dan Bailey, director of UMBC's Imaging Research Center, and this is an introduction to the work we've been doing to visualize the city of Washington, D.C. as it was in 1814. Here is a current satellite image of Washington, D.C., showing the area at the center of the District of Columbia included in Pierre Charles Lafont's original plan of the city. Colored pins mark the location of key landmarks, the Capitol, the White House, the Washington Monument, and the Lincoln and Jefferson Memorials. Now watch as the image morphs into a topographic map by architect Don Alexander Hawkins that depicts how the territory appeared to Lafont in March of 1791 when he arrived to begin his work. Note the dramatic differences in the shape of the land and the width of the Potomac River. Those few images of the early city that have survived until today were created mostly by untrained amateurs or professionals educated in the Romantic landscape tradition. These artworks, full of optimism and imagination, usually fail to provide an accurate topography or the relative position of objects on the land. Is this really how the federal city appeared from Georgetown in the early 1800s? We might as well be looking at the Blue Ridge Mountains rather than the site of the young nation's capital. Early maps presented the city as finished and orderly. It was neither. The task of visualizing the nascent city has proved to be more challenging than we'd anticipated, not due to the limits of technology, but due to the sparseness of reliable historical evidence. Our first step was to create a base map, reflecting everything known about the city in the early 1800s. This map, based on cartography and scholarship by Don Hawkins, is keyed to a large database that we assembled of early Washington, D.C. paintings, drawings, and written references. For example, Q4, highlighted here, indicates the vantage point for an image sketched by John Reuben Smith in 1830. Scholars agree that the wooden cabins seen here are historically accurate. So is the fence, a security measure designed in part to keep cows out of the Capitol. To represent the rise and fall of the landscape, we relied on the work of USGS geographer Peter Chirico, who used detailed surveys from before and after the Civil War to create a large-scale 3D model of the landscape. Then we adjusted that information using Hawkins's topographic reconstruction of the ground in 1790. This results in our best approximation of the contours of Washington, D.C. as they would have appeared more than two centuries ago. This survey drawing of the U.S. Capitol and its grounds, created by Benjamin Henry Latrobe, provided an exciting opportunity to recreate the original shape of Capitol Hill. Here we attempt to illustrate what Latrobe was able to see in his mind. Lines drawn in two dimensions come to life in three. This eliminates the need for viewers to make sense of cartographic maps made using methods that, while elegant for their time, have now been obsolete for more than a century. Thanks to Latrobe's efforts, and thanks to the fact that his drawing survived, we can precisely visualize Capitol Hill in the year 1814. We're now ready to add simple models of documented structures to our terrain map. We affectionately call this our monopoly building phase. After we've used the best available evidence to assemble our map and tentatively place buildings, we can double check our work by comparing historical drawings from the time period against our recreated landscape. In this example, two seemingly incidental farm buildings in a sketch of the Capitol by Latrobe are shown to be aligned correctly to a much later and different viewpoint. This process of triangulation allows us to verify the location of buildings, roads, fields, fences, and other landscape elements, immersing us in a very different capital city than the one we experience today. Now, finally, the real fun and work can begin. In this rough composite sequence, our camera flies low to the ground, gliding along Pennsylvania Avenue from the White House down to the Capitol. It's a revelation, a national mall without museums or monuments, home to grazing animals and fields of wheat, corn, and tobacco. The Potomac River dominates the view, brown with silt and mud. The scene beyond the river is no generic stock background. The horizon line you see here, 
truly reflects the location and appearance of hills, pastures, farm fields, and forests. Thanks to four years of work at UMBC's Imaging Research Center, more than 5,000 hours of labor in all, we can now generate a view of the infant capital city from any location we wish. Out of the tangled roots of cartography, historical scholarship, art history, and simple curiosity emerges a fleshed out recreation of Washington as it was. Our digital artists can now put the final touches on a complete, fully rendered historical tableau. This animation is what we call a proof of concept, an attempt to visualize in as much detail as possible a single specific place and moment in Washington's early history. Here, then, is one finished piece of the historical puzzle, our best guess as to how the unfinished capital would have looked almost two centuries ago in the spring of 1814, just months before the building, as well as all of the priceless historical documentation within its walls, was burned by the British.